May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. November 6, 2024 Wednesday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philippians. My beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you, and in the same way you also must be glad and rejoice with me. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost, to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousand to oppose the one who comes against him with twenty thousand? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, None of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection After this startling opening line from our Lord, Jesus concludes today's Gospel by saying, In the same way, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Thus, at first read it appears that we are called to not only renounce all we possess but also to hate those within our own family. But is this truly what our Lord means? Let's begin with the idea of hating those within our family and even our own life. Obviously the word hate in this gospel passage is not the same as the sin of hate and anger. In commenting on this passage, one church father explains that there are some cases when the best way to love another is through a form of hate. That is, if another were to act as an obstacle to God, working to deter us from the will of our Lord, 
then our hatred for the actions they do must be firmly expressed. But this is love. A refusal to turn from God by rejecting another's disordered actions is a way of sharing the gospel with them. Let's take an extreme example. Imagine that you lived at a time and circumstance where being a Christian was a crime. You were arrested and commanded to publicly renounce your faith. Instead, you renounced that command with every strength of your soul. In this case, you exercise a form of holy hate for the persecution the person is imposing upon you. But that is also an act of love toward them as you fully reject their action by renouncing their command. Or consider also how you hate even your own life. Let's say that you fall into serious sin over and over. The appropriate response is not only to repent but also to have a form of holy hatred for the habit into which you have fallen. This is a true hatred for yourself in the sense that it is a hatred for that which you have become by your sin. But this holy hatred has the ultimate goal of passionately overcoming your sin and is therefore a true act of love for yourself. The concluding line of today's gospel mentioned above calls us to renounce all of our possessions. In other words, we must renounce anything that we are attached to in a way that is contrary to the will of God. Of course, in God's providence most people, except those who take a vow of poverty, are invited by God to have various possessions so as to meet the material needs of life. But even in this case, we must renounce all that we possess, meaning, we must not allow ourselves to become attached to anything other than God. But this is freedom in the truest sense. Even if you have many things, it must be understood that those things do not make you happy. Only God and His will can fulfill you. Nothing else. Thus, we must learn to live as if God and God alone suffices. And if it is God's will that you obtain a house, car, computer, television and other modern conveniences, then so be it. But true renunciation of all of these possessions simply means that if at any time you were to lose them, then this would be fine. Therein is perfect detachment. The loss of something material would not deter you in any way from loving and serving God and His holy will. Reflect, today, upon these radical words of Jesus. Try to hear them in the way our Lord meant them. Work to be detached from everything that is contrary to the will of God and everything that becomes an obstacle to God in your life. In the end, possessing God alone is more than you could ever hope for. And only if you fully possess our merciful God will you be able to love yourself and others with the pure heart and love of Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. My demanding Lord, you call us all to a life of radical holiness. You desire that I come to love you above all with all my heart. Please give me the grace and wisdom I need to renounce all that is an obstacle to my love and service of you. May you and you alone be glorified in my life. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends and family, so that they may also be blessed as you are. May God bless you.